Hello everyone, welcome to CryptoPay News Channel, bringing you the latest news and current events from around the world about finance. Breaking news. Second largest bank failures in United States history. We will bring you more on this developing story as it unfolds. Thank you for joining us tonight. We have a jam-packed news program for you, including reasons of fail SVB, advise Peter Thiel, risk finance in SVB, comments by Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, Qcoin News, and Bitcoin jumps. The tumultuous ride of Bitcoin continues as the cryptocurrency falls. This time, the blame is being placed on the troubles of Silvergate, a bank that has been a key player in the crypto industry. Bitcoin's downward spiral continued for the fourth consecutive day, with the collapse of Silvergate Capital Corporation, a crypto-friendly bank, adding to negative sentiment towards digital assets. Furthermore, news of a lawsuit against crypto platform Qcoin filed by the New York State further dampened investor confidence. The sudden fall in a prominent exchange token associated with digital asset entrepreneur Justin Sun also contributed to the decline. The price of Bitcoin dropped by up to 8.8% on Thursday, trading around $20,000, its lowest level since mid-January. As the day progressed, the Huobi Exchange's native token plummeted following accusations by the New York Attorney General that KuCoin was operating in the state without a license. How venture capitalist Peter Till's criticism of Silicon Valley Bank highlights the intersection of politics and finance. Peter Till's Founders Fund is a venture capital firm that invests in startups and early-stage companies. In the past, Thiel has been critical of Silicon Valley Bank SVB, a financial institution that provides banking services to many tech startups. In a recent letter to its portfolio companies, Founders Fund advised companies to withdraw their money from SVB and switch to other banks. The letter cited concerns about SVB's perceived lack of support for conservative values and its alleged censorship of conservative voices. It's worth noting that SVB has not publicly commented on the matter, and it's unclear whether any of the allegations made in the letter are true. Furthermore, it's up to individual companies to decide where they want to do their banking and whether they want to take Founders Fund's advice. Overall, while Teal and Founders Fund may have their reasons for advising companies to withdraw their money from SVB, it's important for companies to carefully consider all factors when choosing a bank and to make their own decisions based on their unique needs and priorities. The recent financial struggles of Silicon Valley Bank and the potential risks and vulnerabilities of the tech industry's financial ecosystem. Silicon Valley Bank's recent financial performance has caused concern among investors and industry observers, with some calling for greater scrutiny of the bank and its practices. The bank, which provides financial services to many tech startups, has experienced a sharp decline in net interest income and has been forced to sell off much of its available for sale securities portfolio. These developments have led to a significant drop in SVB's stock price and have raised questions about the bank's financial stability. Some experts argue that SVB's troubles should be a cause for concern, given the important role it plays in the tech industry and its close ties to many of the sector's most prominent companies. In particular, some have expressed concern about the bank's exposure to high-risk loans and the potential impact of a broader economic downturn on its business. Others have called for greater transparency from SVB and other financial institutions that serve the tech industry, arguing that these institutions should be subject to greater oversight and regulation. Overall, while it remains to be seen how SVB will weather its current challenges, its recent struggles have highlighted the potential risks and vulnerabilities of the tech industry's financial ecosystem. As such, it may be time for greater scrutiny and caution in this area to ensure that the industry remains strong and stable over the long term. The risks and challenges facing financial institutions that serve the cryptocurrency and blockchain space and the need for vigilance and adaptability in this fast-moving industry. Silvergate Bank, a financial institution that specialized in serving cryptocurrency clients, has recently announced its plans to wind down its banking operations and liquidate. The bank had built its reputation around providing services to clients in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space, including prominent exchanges such as FTX. However, Silvergate Bank experienced a significant loss of deposits as the value of digital assets plunged, leaving many of its clients with significant losses. As a result, the bank has been forced to reevaluate its business model and has concluded that winding down its operations is the best course of action. 
The decision to liquidate is expected to take several months and will involve returning deposits to customers and winding down operations in an orderly manner. Despite the setback, Silvergate Bank's leadership has expressed confidence in the long-term prospects of the cryptocurrency industry and the opportunities that it presents. The news of Silvergate Bank's liquidation underscores the risks and challenges facing financial institutions that serve the fast-moving and volatile world of cryptocurrency. While the industry has shown great promise in recent years, it remains highly susceptible to fluctuations in value and other uncertainties. As such, it is essential for companies in this space to remain vigilant and adaptable to changing market conditions in order to remain successful over the long term. The tightrope walk of central banking, balancing data dependency and market stability. The recent comments by Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell and Reserve Bank of Australia Governor Philip Lowe highlight the challenge of being led by data in central banking. While data dependency is a popular buzzword in central banking circles, it can be difficult to balance the need to be responsive to changing economic conditions with the risks of creating market volatility through sudden policy shifts. Powell's recent comments about the possibility of returning to 50 basis point increases in the Fed's main rate were quickly tempered, suggesting that the Fed is not necessarily committed to this path. Meanwhile, Lowe has emphasized that the RBA is keeping an open mind about the possibility of a rate pause, but has struggled with communicating a consistent message to the market. Despite these challenges, both Powell and Lowe have emphasized the importance of staying focused on inflation targets and using interest rates as a tool to achieve them. However, the current economic environment is complex, with many variables at near record highs or lows. This makes it difficult to predict the best course of action and highlights the need for central bankers to be flexible and responsive to changing conditions. In short, while data dependency remains an important principle for central bankers, it is not a panacea. Rather, it is one tool among many that must be used judiciously and with an eye toward minimizing market disruption and achieving long-term economic stability. New York Attorney General Files Lawsuit Against KuCoin Crypto Exchange New York Attorney General Letitia James has filed a lawsuit against KuCoin, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges, alleging that it cannot legitimately claim to be an exchange as it is not registered with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission or properly designated by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. This lawsuit is part of James' efforts to bring order to the industry and reign in shadowy cryptocurrency companies that are putting investors at risk. In addition to this, the lawsuit is among the first in which a state regulator is claiming in court that Ether, the second largest cryptocurrency by value, is a security. The question of what crypto assets regulators consider to be securities is being actively litigated and is the subject of multiple inquiries. As the cryptocurrency industry continues to evolve, it is important for regulators and industry players to work together to establish clear rules and guidelines that protect investors and promote innovation. While lawsuits like this one may create uncertainty and market volatility in the short term, they ultimately serve to strengthen the industry in the long run. Latest news, Bitcoin jumps after US supports banking sector. It seems that the cryptocurrency market has reacted positively to the news of US agencies pledging to protect depositors' money and providing easier terms for short-term loans to banks. This news follows the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and the closure of Signature Bank by New York State financial regulators. The largest cryptocurrency has gained 5.3% to $21,582 which is the biggest increase since February 15. Rachel Lynn, co-founder of Sin Futures, has stated that the Federal Reserve's rescue plan has boosted market confidence and allayed concerns about the potential collapse of additional players, particularly given that Signature is a major bank within the crypto industry. SVB's failure triggered a knock-on effect in the crucial market for stable coins, after digital asset giant Circle Internet Financial Corporation, one of the biggest issuers of the widely used tokens known for their perceived safety, revealed it had $3.3 billion of reserves with the bank. The news caused Circle's token, USD coin, to slip below its intended one-for-one -one peg with the dollar, sending a shock through the market. It was trading at around 99 cents.